God are not just hanging in mid here, and you have foundation and roots for those promises. There must be a change in the heart. Then you pick up those promises. Say the promises are made for you. And you know, in any congregation like this, there are saints, there are sinners, there are believers, there are backsliders. And if everybody just repeats and recites all the promises of God and says, Man, what if the prodigal son in the faraway country kept on repeating to himself while he was there in the far country? I am good, I'm great, I will do well, I will succeed, no evil shall come upon me. And the fellow stays in the far country. No, you don't take the promises of God like he came to himself. And then he said, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto my father, it's not what you say to yourself first. It is what you say to the father. I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm not worthy to be called your child. Make me one of your hired servants. And while he was coming, the father ran and embraced him. And he got into the family before the inheritance and the family became his. So those motivational speakers themselves, they are reviewing and they are kind of uh, saying the things we have been teaching and the motivations we have been given, what's the effect? I actually heard of one of them and I had this from him directly himself, uh, one of the motivational speakers and you know he went and delivered a great talk and the people shouted, they were excited, excited for the moment and then after that, exi after that excitement one of the people came and said do you recognize me? And the fellow said, no, I see many people. Can I recognize you? And so the fellow said, well, I attended your motivational talk and seminar, just like I did today, some years ago. Mentioned the place and mentioned the event. And then you told us that, you know, anything we just declare, just say, just repeat it. And that will be free. And I wanted to be, you know, free from uh, smoking. And I said it over and over and over again. And, you know, in that excitement, I went back home saying, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. No more smoking. And then, uh, you know, the motivational speaker, you know, smiled and said, yes, that's what I say. Positive affirmation. And then the fellow brought out a packet of Marlboro. Said, look at this. I'm still on it. I'm still not free. It is not just saying it. You need help from above. Come out of the far country. And then come and say, Lord, I come to you. I want a change. I want these promises to be mine. It is that that makes the confession, the affirmation useful and profitable. Otherwise, if we just come to this confession, to this convention, and all we do is confession, all we we'll do is positive affirmation. All we we'll do is just saying, I am this, I am this, I'll go great. You know, I'll succeed. You never study, you never go to work. The laziness is still there, the procrastination is still there, the hatred malice is still there, and all the deficiencies in character is still there. Only confession, that will not do. We need the change of heart and the change of life, and then after that, then... We we'll hold on to the promises of God. Give me a good amen. amen. Now we we'll come back to this Romans chapter 4. It says, as it is written, that I've made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickness the dead and call it those things which be not as though they were. And then it says in verse 18, who against all believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and be not weak in faith remember that faith at foundation it was a friend of god and i know that abraham will instruct all his children to do according to all that have spoken unto him it is that foundation of obedience and that foundation of righteousness that made him now to be able to stand by that faith and claim the promises of god that 
what God said and spoke into his life, that those things will come to pass, be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. He considered not his own body. He considered the might of God, the power of God, the strength of God, the anointing of God, the promise of God, and what God has said. Because he had right, proper motivation and proper meditation. He had the word of God within him. On that foundation, he was able to receive what the Lord had promised. He considered not his own body, now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. You know, sometimes those promises are so great, and sometimes they're beyond the human, beyond the natural. And because they are beyond the human and the natural and the ordinary, most people will feel, how can that be? How can that mountain move? How can that impossibility become possible? How can that great sin unheard of, great exploits, how can that be done? How can that supernatural come into the life of a natural man? But he staggered not at the promise of God's wrong belief because he knew that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creator of the universe. And because he says, I am God, I change not with him, nothing shall be impossible. I said with him, nothing shall be impossible. If you are in the right place and you have the right understanding and you accept the right word that he has spoken, then he fulfills that word. He doesn't need your help, your power, your support. He doesn't need anything from you. All he needs from you is the faith. Once you are standing in the right place, having the, having the mind that you ought to have, and you're holding on to those promises, then everything he said will come, will come in Jesus name. He tells us in verse 21, I'm being fully persuaded, not just almost persuaded, but fully persuaded in his heart, that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. The Lord is able to perform. He will do it in Jesus' name. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, we're looking at the faith of Abraham's seed. And you take that faith of Abraham's seed, from the faith of Abraham himself. You must be able to do what Abraham did. Go the way Abraham went and live the way Abraham lived. And hold on to the promises Abraham held on to. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a land which he should hereafter receive for an inheritance. He obeyed, and he went out. Tell me the rest. And that's the faith of Abraham. That's, that's more than just making a confession of faith, making an affirmation of faith. God called him and said, Abraham, he said, yes, stand up and go to this place. It's never been that place before. And you know that uh, we, uh, we, there's something we call the comfort zone. The comfort zone is where we're familiar with the comfort zone. We've been there all the time. All our friends are there. And everything surrounding us in the comfort zone. And the Lord is saying, get out of that comfort zone. And I'm going to take you to a zone that you have never been. And Abraham believed God. He says, God is wise. He knows then from the beginning. I don't know anything about, I'm not familiar with that land. And yet he wants to take me there. And he went not knowing whither he went. That's the faith of Abraham. And you see many people, and they're not willing to take that journey from the known to the unknown. They say, I don't know what the future will bring. I don't know what, uh, you know, this new move, a new direction, a new decision, where it will lead me. And because they do not know that. They cannot take the step. But the faith of Abraham is that when God called him to go to a place he did not know, he didn't say, Lord, tell me everything. Isn't that, you know, the people who are not trying to see visions today, they want to know everything before they ever take any step. And they want to be able to say, I'm sure this will happen, and this will happen, and that will happen. And if they don't have all that vision, they're not going to take a step. That's not faith. That's why over here in our 
church we just follow the lord by faith and he says i'm taking you here i'm taking you there we say yes lord we're following we can even close our eyes and follow him we don't have to say lord but how about this how about that that's the face of abraham that you obeyed and went not knowing whither he went we're looking at chapter 11 verse 17 hebrews chapter 11 verse 17 by faith abraham when he was tried when he was tested your conviction will be tested your confession will be tested your consecration commitment will be tested and you know there are people that cannot take any test at all no not in church they cannot endure anything and if you tested them like now me tested rules in the old testament why are you following after me go back do i have any child any son in my womb to give you what even if you have hope and i say i shall have a son today will you be waiting until uh, that child is grown up the people that cannot follow they cannot stand the test and ruth said don't tell me to go back because where you go i will go where you live i will live and where you die i will die and the lord bless that woman later you see the blessing that came on ruth is because of passing the test here comes elijah and elijah elijah said elijah said unto elijah you tarry here the lord has sent me unto bethel and then elijah said as the lord liveth as i so live i will not leave thee and they went on together they got to, to jericho and he said uh, you know you stay here the lord has sent me to another place beyond jordan he said as the lord liveth as i so liveth i will not leave thee are there people you know sometimes uh, there are people that you know you come to church and you know the pastor might like me i might say something that is okay he puts me off he says i shouldn't follow he says uh, find your way go your way and all the, since that's what he said um you know i'm sensitive i understand when people say if they say it by action they say it by what i can tell i can i can i, I know the meaning of what they say so i i get out of that their sight you failed the test but you know elisha is elisha said no i'm still following i said i'm still following i said i'm still following uh, you know uh, there are people that feel that elijah must always bench to elisha the master must always bench to the member to the subject but you know it wasn't so in the bible days and then the 50 sons of the prophet said hey elisha do you know the lord is going to take your master from your head today he said i know it hold your peace he was looking for something if you're looking for something you'll pass the test you'll stay there and say yes i know what he's saying he said i should stay here by the way, Elijah did not tell Elisha that God told him that you are the one to stand in my room after I'm gone. Elijah never said anything like that. He just said, stay back. Go back. Don't run after me. Don't follow after me. But he kept on following. That's how the mantle came upon him. The people that easily give up and the people that say, yes, understand what they're saying. I understand they're saying I should, you know, find my way. They, ne they never get the mantle. But the people that follow through by faith, that the people that get the mantle, I pray that you'll follow through. And so Eli we hear about this. Abraham, he was tested. We're looking at verse 17 again. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, when he was tested, he offered up, he offered up Isaac and he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom he it was said that i in isaac shall thy seed be called verse 19 accounting that god was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure that's the faith the faith of abraham said that it looks impossible what the lord is demanding of me the repentance and the turning around and doing this and doing that which appears to be out of the ordinary i'm going to do it because i know that if i do that god has something he's going to achieve out of that he'll achieve it in your life in jesus name i'm going to point number two now the fruitfulness of abraham's spouse the fruitfulness of abraham's spouse it wasn't only abraham that that faith sarah too the spouse the wife at faith we're looking at hebrews chapter 11 verse 11 hebrews 11 verse 11 through faith also sarah herself received strength to conceive 
to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful because she accounted god faithful because she looked at all the actions of god all the things God had done, all the things that God had said, and what God had said always matched what God had done. And eventually she came to that point and said, I can trust God. I, can, I won't trust my body more than God. I'm not going to make a God of my body. I'm not going to make the condition of my body to be more stable and more solid and more dependable than the word of God. And because of that, we're told she trusted in God and she judged him faithful who had promise our god is faithful and because he is faithful you can look away from everything you see around you everything you feel within you and then you can say because of the faithfulness of god this is what i'm going to stand upon and the lord will glorify himself in your life in jesus name we're looking at uh, hebrews chapter 10 hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering let us hold fast us the believers all the regenerate us the people of god us the people who have made christ our savior our lord he says let us hold fast and let us hold on to that profession confession of faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised he is faithful the condition of the world will not change the faithfulness of god and the economy will not change the faithfulness of God. And the way you feel in your body, your feeling will not change the faithfulness of God. All the people that surround you, their comments, their jeering, whatever it is they do or say, will not change the faithfulness of God. That's why it says, since we know that God is faithful, let us hold fast the confession and the profession of our faith. Knowing that our God is a faithful God. Because God is faithful, we know he will do what he said he will do. And no matter, even if the sky, the heavens, if they move, we know that God who is a faithful God who says, I'm God, I change not, he will do everything. Second Corinthians, I'm looking at, uh, First Corinthians rather, we're looking at chapter 1 verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9. The faithfulness of God and the faithfulness of Abraham's spouse, counting God to be faithful judging god to be faithful and saying that his promises are yes and amen in christ i can rest on that i can depend on that i can overlook the way i feel and then i can stand upon this on changing truth and changing word first corinthians chapter 1 verse 9 god is faithful is he faithful god is faithful if there is any failure it's not because god is failing the failure is always on man's side Maybe sometimes you are trying to claim a letter that is not sent to you. Maybe you are trying to do something that, you know, you don't have really a faith ground to stand on that thing. I know the people that always uh, quote uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 23. I'm coming back to uh, 1 Corinthians, but let me just show you something and, and see why sometimes they say, I, I quoted it. It didn't work. 